everybody. It's December the 4th, Sunday. Well, it's not, but it is. <laughs> so I hope you can enjoy this premiere. Um, it's, uh, this, this was shot back in the summer, really. I repaired this, um, this battery control module for the Mercedes. And uh, I did promise Stuart that I'd get the video out there, but I just haven't had a chance. So I thought this is a good opportunity to get it underway. But first of all, we've got some advent calendars to open. So um, I'm going to do two now and two at the end of the video. So if you stay till the end, you'll see the Weera and the um, remote control car. So let's get the, um, the first one open. Let me just sort the camera out. So this is the Haynes radio and if I can get it in shot we've got number four over here quite a large window so really not sure what's what's it behind this one ah, if I can get it out come on oh it's breaking it's breaking she's breaking up <laughs> let's use a bit of help from a spudger to get going there we go that's that way Doesn't matter if it rips, I don't suppose, but I do. I I'm just a fussy sod. Ah, okay. Well, that's pretty self-explanatory. So this this is the basis of the whole radio. This is like your circuit board, really. So everything's um, going to plug into this, and eventually we'll have a complete radio built up on here. We'll have a quick look in the instructions just to see what it says. It's probably going to tell us to put our LED and the battery connector in. Let's have a quick look. Battery clip fourth. Yeah, so I think what we'll do is we'll assemble that. Um, we'll assemb assemble that on Monday. But um, this is the breadboard, and you'll see that we've got the speaker from yesterday's stream. So the speaker connected up with the LED and the battery. Oh, I was just gonna make a pop, I suspect. Or a buzz or something, yeah, clicking sound. And uh, in this one, we're gonna wire it up in series with the diode, which has apparently got a built-in resistor. Still haven't seen that yet, really. I need to get that under the microscope to have a nose. So there we are, that's uh, the next part of the puzzle, so to speak. So we'll pop that to one side. I nearly forgot about Penguin, who is very patiently waiting over there. <laughs> Hello, Penguin. How you doing, mate? <laughs> Hi, Penguin. Anyway, let's get rid of me because I'm in the way. I'm in the way. So we've got number four. Come on down, number four, up the top, Penguin. Oh, as he says, kicking the camera over. Let's uh, see what we've got in number four. Oh, God, these bottles are really big. <laughs> they only just come out the hole. Ah, this it looks interesting. Bad, bad King John. Bad King John. Oh, this looks interesting. This looks interesting. Ciao, Penguin. See you tomorrow. So, Bad King John. What do we, what do we know about Bad King John? It's 6%, so it's get, they're getting stronger. I think Mrs. Crunchers put them in in order of strength because I think the first one I had was something like 4%. Yesterday's... No, sorry. The first one was 4 The second one was five we got yesterday's beer and this one which is six a very english black ale bottle condition so it's got live yeast in it uh, who's made this then this is ridgeway brewing in oxfordshire south stoke in oxfordshire for all you oxfordshire people out there so I'm looking forward to that one, but I won't be drinking it at the moment because I've got live stream again in a minute. So <laughs> there we are, Sunday's 
for your advent calendar done. So on to the main event now. See you a bit later for the other two advent calendars. Okay, well, I've got yet again something a bit strange on the bench today. Um, this is actually an ECU from a Mercedes. There's the part number. I believe he said it was a 2003, so it's an old, older Mercedes, but these are renowned for um, catching on fire. I mean, you can see just inside the lid there, there's some um, soot. And if we look inside here, uh, well, you're going to be able to see this, but um, it's, let's just get the light. I've got the microscope in here, which is it's a bit difficult to see it, but... Um, Down here, we can get in a bit closer. We've had a bit of a catastrophic event. Now, it could be one of these MOSFETs. Um, and looking online, that one there, the second one to the right, it's got a little bit of scorching on one side, but that may be f because of this area caught fire. I suspect one of these caps has um, shorted and killed it. Um, or it could be one of these, I think these are MOSFETs. I thought they were voltage regulators, but they're not. They're uh, they're MOSFETs. So one of these three has probably had it as well. I have tested them, and they're, they're sort of all measuring the same. So it might be that it's just one of these caps, but I don't know if you can see, but actually just in that area, that coppery colour, is uh, is where the board has actually melted so um i don't hold up much hope it's really trashed the board it's a triple layer board as well <clears throat> so it's got another layer inside and just down here we've got another issue you know i thought something was missing off of the board down there but it's actually uh, a surface mount component that's completely blown off the board you can see where it used to be I don't know if that's a capacitor, but uh, it looks like something's gone dead short and um, caused it to pop. I mean, this red thing looks like it's a coil. Yeah, interesting stuff. So I'm going to just pull this board apart now. I'm going to pull the capacitors in that area uh, just for a closer look. So I just thought I'd show you uh, what I was looking at today. So thanks for watching. Okay, so I've removed the two um, capacitors that were in the way. And uh, you can sort of see the damage here. I've not cleaned it up yet, but um, two of those capacitors are absolutely blown apart. There's one there blown apart as well. Um, I suspect <clears throat> it's got a short in the um, middle layer. Because that looks like it's gone pop outwards, doesn't it, really? But, um, yeah... I'm going to clean that up and see what happens. Okay, well, I'm making progress on the uh, on the Mercedes ECU. It's a battery management control board, I believe. Um, you can see I've got the MOSFETs off. Some of them, um, they are tricky to get off. But one left to do here. This is not a MOSFET. This is a dual diode package. And uh, that's checking out all right, so I'm going to leave that in. I mean, to be fair, these are checking out okay, but the, the whole point is really to... Um, to give it some longevity and um, make sure it's okay for the future. So you can see up here where I've um, had to dig out another bit of burnt copper and um, carbonated fiberglass. We've also got some sort of heat damage here as well. 
open that that's uh, that's going to be okay it's not i'm not quite sure on this board so that's good and uh, this is the main area now my theory and uh, i've had a chat with someone else about this i believe that um this for some reason has pulled a lot of current um it may have been may have had a jump start or something like that and it's um it's shorted one of those uh, the caps are gone at the moment because there's a big hole in the board but um there's a bank of three uh, one microfarad capacitors down through there that basically separate the uh, positive and the negative and uh, one of those has gone short i believe and uh, caused all the damage because i can't see a mosfet gone I've taken out all the capacitors now, but yeah, very strange pads for these MOSFETs. Um, yeah, never seen pads like that before, but there you are. It's a first for everything. So uh, I'm going to get this one here off and see if I can actually get some footage of doing that. It's the very last one, so I'll do it on camera. Okay, well here we are with the um, Mercedes battery management unit. I think that's what it's called, a BCU, battery control unit, battery management unit. I'm not sure. But as you can see, it is now done. Um, what a lot of work. So what have I done? I've, um, I've rebuilt the board, as you can probably see uh, in through there. All that lovely greenness. So there's two brand new bits of copper plate in there, um, new capacitors, all these capacitors, these uh, are um, automotive grade Panasonic capacitors, on slightly higher voltage than the originals. All the MOSFETs are done, you can see two there. I've replaced all of the MOSFETs in this. I didn't find any that were shorted to be fair, but um, the the state of this board when i had it um i thought it was probably best to uh to get them replaced you can see the the green area there where i've got all the um high temperature soda mask so i've replaced all of those capacitors you can see there some little ones in behind i've did, done those as well going closer those little ones in behind i've done those three these four just about see the board that I put in there. I also replaced that one in there. Um, that's much, much bigger than the original one, but I think it's the same value. I just uh, put a bigger one in to save uh, doing a board repair on that. So I've just cut all the carbonized board out of it and uh, bridged it with a larger size. All automotive grade caps. Um what else have i done <laughs> you can see all the mosfets all of these are new that's a um a diode package in there so that one was existing i haven't touched that it's another one there you can see the the burning i mean some of that's from from my soldering iron try and get in there but most of it is blackened from where it caught fire we didn't catch we didn't catch fire luckily but it's certainly it must have done it's just lucky it's in a metal can, really. <clears throat> Flipping the board over, I've reflowed these connectors here. You can see the two plastic connectors. They've all got pins on them. If I flip it over, you can just about see the pins down through there, in behind, and the pins here. Apparently, these are a known issue with dry joints, so I've just gone over, gone through, and I've... Uh, I've reflowed all of those. I've also changed a resistor, which is too close to see it. You can just about see a center frame there. I've replaced that one. And uh, just basically given it a clean up. So uh, there it is. 
ready to go back in the car so uh, i'm going to be doing a video going in the car i've got some big thermal pads on this the dark green areas and they coincide with some thermal pads on the inside of the case i'm going to clean that off with some isopropyl and then i've got to bolt the board back down it just basically sits in there like that and uh, then we've got the lid goes on Uh, if I turn that round, <clears throat> get a better idea. So we've got uh, some connectors there. I'll take it. This is directly off the battery. I'm not sure which is live and which is neutral, but um, yeah, pretty substantial connector. You wouldn't have thought that something that powerful goes straight into a circuit board, would you? But there you are, and that's the part number. So I believe it's somewhere around about the 1400 quid mark plus VAT. So uh, it could have saved the owner over a grand if it works. So we'll pop it in the car and let's see how we go. Thanks for watching. So uh, the car then, Stu, looks pretty smart. What is it again? It's a Mercedes. R230 SL500. R230 SL500. Then it's for sale if anyone wants it. Or are you keeping it? Uh, I don't know. Now the sun's out. It's, you might as well it's use it. it. But it will be for sale, no doubt. Yeah, certainly a smart motor, isn't it? What engine's it got in it? Uh, 5 litre V8. Hell. Yeah. 5 litre V8. Yeah. So it's it, a nice um, car back in the day. I think the chap who bought it's a one owner car, and the chap I bought it off paid £75,000 for it in 2003, which is quite a lot. And you paid sixty five grand for it last year. <laughs> Ideal, <laughs> excellent. That's a smart motor. I know uh, Mrs. Cruncher was, uh, would love to have one of these. Very nice. I didn't really didn't know what car it was going in, but um, it's all lever as well. Excellent stuff. So you didn't really realise that this was uh, a problem until you um, decided to take the cover off one day and have a look, didn't you? Or it was getting yeah, occasional it problems. With, um, it happened a few times. A uh, red warning light come up on the um, dashboard display. Right. Um, and it was it was only up quite briefly, or you stop the car and start again, and then you wouldn't see it again until the next time you drove it. Right. Um, but it got a bit more regular, and it was just like a battery warning light or something, was yeah, it? Yeah, just a, it's the it was saying that the main it's a, the red warning light on the dashboard is the starter battery not charging. Right. So. I and this has got two a, batteries in it, you said. Yeah, there's a consumer battery in the boot. Um, so I took it to a mechanic friend of mine who's a bit more clued up on electronics and he went right through everything and he narrowed it down to being this control box. So I pulled it out, took the cover off and well. Hey presto. Yeah, and there it was. It was and we had our torched um, board. Well, so I've certainly done a fair bit to it. Spent um, spent a few days on that <laughs> in hours. <Yeah. laughs> but yeah, hopefully, yeah. hopefully. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed it Watch won't. Um, ready. Yeah. Fire brigade are on call. That is quite a common fault with them. Then. Yeah. Quite, uh, yeah, I saw the forum that you uh, you yeah. shared with me on Facebook with lots of people having the same sort of issues. Yeah, quite a few of them have actually gone up in smoke. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I suppose it is encased in a metal box, luckily, because I think probably if yours was in a plastic box, it would have gone up as well. Yeah. That's um, quite expensive to replace. Uh, right. Connect the starter battery. Sorry. Carry on. <coughs> right, I am now. So you're just connecting up the yeah, starter battery now? I looked up online and the um, starter battery needs to be connected first. Right. And then the consumer battery in that. So does that put power on the back as soon as you connect that then? 
Well, that the box that you've repaired is what controls the charging between the front and rear battery. Right. So as soon as you connect so, that well, now, we'll have power I on the back. Yeah. There will be some power, but I'm, okay. So uh, before you connect the second second one, then I'll nip round the back quick, yeah, yeah, uh, so I can see the smoke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or not, hopefully. Hopefully not. You never know. Well, we've certainly given it a good um, good chance, anyway. I had much faith in it. I'm sure it'll be fine. Oh. Pot then, isn't it? Yeah, let me just go around the back then. So make sure there's nothing burning or any smoke coming out of this anywhere. No, doesn't appear to be anything at the moment. Yeah. All good so far. Both new? Yeah, before I even done anything with the car, because the car had been sat quite a long time. The first thing I did was put two new batteries before I even collected it. Right. So these rear batteries are known for having a drain on them anyway. Right. A lot of people fit like triple chargers to them. Right. Yeah, see, anything like that might not do that battery no, management right, unit yeah. any good. So certainly jump starting it, things like that is probably going to... Um, Create potential problems with it. Yeah. So we've got the second one going on now. This is it. Oh, oh, something worked. come to life. Oh, yeah. It's all making noises, too. Yeah. <laughs> Quite complicated, really. They're full of electronic motors and stuff. So everything runs off hydraulic. Well, all, all the kit inside the, that um, management cent central unit, central locking, yeah. and uh, the roofs all hydraulic. So this. So this. Um, so we're connected. I can't see any smoke or anything like that at the moment. No issues. Fire up then. Fire in the hole. There you go. I'll get out of the way of the exhaust. And uh, I'll jump if it goes bang. <laughs> Sounds very nice. Yeah. Well, nothing at the moment. How's the battery light -like situation? Yeah, nothing's come up. <coughs> so somewhere there's some. Um... It's just having a bit of a fit because the the roof's not um, oh, clamped right. down properly. It's in its yeah, service yeah. position. But yeah, this it was coming up there with so a red, it was coming red light, up. and then there it was a visit workshop. But so potentially none of that. So if we let it run for a bit and then we just have a feel around the components yeah, yeah. just to see if there's anything getting really hot. To say certainly the area where that green stuff is is what burnt away. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll if I um, just put the cover back on it for a minute when, when we're done. And I'll drive it around for a week or so. Yeah. And we'll just keep a bit of an eye on it, take the cover off and because this trims a bit of the paint to get in and out. So. Mm. Yeah, well, it's looking, looking good, good, isn't it? Yeah. Whether it would have um, popped immediately or not, I don't know, but... You think it would, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, certainly I haven't killed it. It still works. No, that's all right. <laughs> Surprising, considering the, what, what I had to do to it. It's pretty, like, killer cure, really. Yeah. Wow. It looks like um, that may have fixed it then. Looking that way. Cool. That's good times. Yeah, excellent. Well, there we are. So you're going to give it a, a shoot around for about a week or so, are you? Yeah, I'll, I'll run it for a week. And then yeah. 
before I build it all back up because it's just a bit of a pain getting all this trim in and out if I do have to get to it again. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, no worries. Yeah. Excellent. Job done then. So here's the inside of the uh, SL. And uh, looks like, it says malfunction memory malfunction. Malfunction at memory malfunction, but um, I don't know if that's anything to do with it. Yeah, nice. So I think we can say that's some fixed. The final piece, top cover. So it looks like it's a success anyway, which is uh, brilliant news. It, I did say 70%, didn't I? You did, yeah. 70% chance. Yeah. It's worth worth taking a punt on it. Definitely. The price of a new one. Yeah, crazy money. There's all torque screws on these things as well, aren't they? Yeah. They love those on German cars, isn't it? Mm. Well, it's not as easy to strip the heads on them, is it? With torques. No, they are better. <laughs> yeah, there are some funny sizes of torques. I, yeah. I've just pulled a strimmer apart for Colin. Oh yeah, a battery strimmer. Right, and uh, that has some weird, like in-between size torques. Right, yeah, they do do on it sometimes. It. Still, that's what is that German still? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, they love it, don't they? There we are. Well, a little bit different than fixing a radio, but um, I do get some weird stuff to fix, though, Stu. I do get some weird stuff to fix. <laughs> Sounds like me in the mornings. <laughs> All right. That worked. Still no um, no warning lights, no warning lights anywhere. No malfunction. No malfunctions. How? Brilliant stuff. Job done. I'm back. So hopefully you enjoyed that video. It was a lot of work actually and I didn't record everything I should have recorded a bit more really but uh, I wanted to just get it done because it was such a headache I uh, I spent a long long time trying to work out what values for the capacitors and um, luckily there was there was enough sort of bits left to, to work out some of them and I had a guesstimate at the other one but as you saw it's working in fact I think Stuart has now sold that car so if you want to buy it You'll have to find out who bought it off him and buy it off them. <laughs> anyway, two more advent calendars. First up is the big old Revel. So let's uh, have a look at that one. So we're looking for number four. I'm sure you can all spot it. Everybody shout at once. Where is it? In the middle. Okay. So get this out. Hello, what have we got in here? Is it a bag of sweets? No. It looks like um, an on-off control or on-off bezel, something like that. Not sure. And by the way, I hope you like the uh, the jumper of the day. Woo! <laughs> oh dear. So there we are. That's another piece for the car. We're going to have to start putting some of this together soon as well, because otherwise... I'm just going to end up with a whole live stream just putting these things together. Right. 
Let's get that one down off the bench and get the weirer up. So this was uh, bought for me by Rob Cross, by the way, this, this one. Hopefully we'll have some sort of uh, racer like that at the end of it. So thank you again, Rob. I thank you every day, but um, you know, so, so I should. And next up is um, all of my stuff falling on the floor and the Weera advent calendar. So we're looking for number four on this one as well. And where is that? These are, these are tough to find because of the pictures on them, really. I can see six, 15, I come, I'm looking for number four. Come in number four, where are you? There. <laughs> Hopefully you got that um, before me. Right on the front door, front door of the church. Ah, let's get this, get the spudger in there again. These are, some of these are quite tough to open. And we've got another bit. This looks like a four mil hexagon bit. It's a four mil hex bit today. So I'll stick that in my um, little bit holder. And uh, it's going to turn into quite a nice little set of this. I, I can see it. It's um, good quality tools these are. So there we are. I do like the little Christmas tree as well. I like that. But you know what I'm like. Anyway, thanks for watching today. Hope you've enjoyed that. Um, as I say, I'm at uh, Wooden Bassett at the moment at the swap meet and auction. I think it's a swap meet and auction, but it's certainly an auction. So uh, if I can get any footage of that, I will get that done and um, we'll have a look at what I've got probably tomorrow. Um, I'm meeting up with one of my supporters there, Rich, and uh, he's going to load my car up with uh, some radios, apparently. So should be interesting. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, like, subscribe, give it a thumbs up. And uh, thanks to my patrons for making all these things happen. Bye for now.